I'm back and just in time for season four and grinding it out. Today's update kicked off all the festivities and everything that we end up seeing here for content wise within Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. But today we're going to be talking about the Warzone changes since we talked about Black Ops Cold War as of yesterday. And there's honestly quite a lot. Truth be told, this might be one of the biggest quality of life and balancing updates we've had in quite some time with some huge changes coming along with it. We're going to break all that down here for you today. So as we go along, drop a like down below. And if you guys want to help appease the YouTube gods, help that algorithm, drop a comment on what you think you're looking forward to the most here in season four or that you're liking already. As well, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There is so much you don't want to miss here coming over the course of the next few days. So make sure you're here for all of it. But that said, let's jump right into it because there is a lot to talk about. Now, of course, first things first is that you do have all that new seasonal content here. You have a brand new battle pass stacked with 100 tiers of content that coming along with things like your new operator of Jackal as an instant unlock. If you buy into the pass, whether that be the base 1000 COD point version or 2400 COD points that bundle, you end up getting Jackal immediately. There's a bunch of new cosmetics, including a host of blueprints and a few other items. The new weapons, of course, we'll discuss here in just a second, come along at tier 15 and tier 31. And if any of that interests you and you decide to pick it up and play throughout it through the entire season. If you guys would like to support the channel a little further, you can use creator code ESPRESSO here in the support of creator functionality. That battle pass purchase or whatever you end up using it on does help directly support the channel, but of course, entirely optional only if you want to. If you decide to, feel free to tweet me a picture. I'd love to shout out some of your generous support in upcoming videos. But also on top of that, we end up seeing that we have the brand new Groundfall seasonal event here, in which this only actually lasts until Thursday and tasks you with getting three challenges across war Warzone as well as Black Ops Cold War for six total. So it's not as in depth as other seasonal events. So it's not anything that is too stressful, perhaps. Whereas the Hunt for Adler event was the last time that we saw a one week only event, but it actually had more challenges associated with it. So this absolutely, I think, is doable within a week's time. But actually, considering that fact, though, that it's only one week, the only other time we saw that was that Hunt for Adler event, in which we ended up getting later on a secondary event to happen mid season. So that might be the case here at this. We might start to see a new mold coming into play here, so keep an eye out that maybe what happens here. But as for those new weapons introduced, it's the C-58 and the MG-82, both in the Battle Pass, but also introduced is the Nail Gun and the Baseball Bat. Now, that C-58 and MG-82 are both incredibly powerful. I'm talking these might actually be taking over the meta here, at least until the first balancing pass goes out or something like that, if Raven ends up getting up on that relatively quickly. They're handling weapon balance a lot more hands-on and a lot quicker it seems like here in recent months so I don't imagine that these stay too powerful for too long but right now you might want to rank these up and start using them we'll break these down here in videos later in the next couple of days but definitely consider those ones for sure but speaking of weapons the k31 and ppsh now also have weapon challenges associated with them if you didn't complete them last season you of course end up having again that new operator of jackal introduced into the fold but along with that you have new seasonal challenges a new season refresh in terms of your rank and all those things that you normally see here but talking about war zone specific changes we had a couple of things actually on the playable map that have changed out you should be aware of first thing being the new red door system now this appears to change every single game where there are a couple of static locations but there's only a handful of them that spawn each game and they're not going to be in the same place every single game if you can end up finding one of these red doors it will then teleport you to a special room here within verdansk in which it's a sort of broadcast station brainwashing location where inside this it gives you all kinds of different high level loot rewards so things like specialist bonus the advanced uav and things like that those are actually all a part of this sort of easter egg if you want to call it that in which you teleport there and you can get some high level loot making it sort of a high risk high reward location just like other points of interest and locations have been in the past but these being a little bit more random so if you find one absolutely check it out additionally we do see that we have new satellite crash locations as well in which you'll see these scattered across the map there are four of them one in Krovnik farmland one in block 18 one in block 16 and then one on Gora bridge leading into downtown these will offer a little bit of some loot locations it's not anything that from what I've seen so far just playing around in plunder that have been yielding too much loot I'm curious though if this does end up leading to an easter egg of some kind here but we'll keep you the day with all of that but you can end up getting some loot here with this and checking out some rare items that may spawn out of that as well down
downtown tower actually is now staying here in which it's now downtown tower it's not nakatomi plaza anymore because they say it's under air quote new management so that stays around though if you liked that centerpiece but we also end up seeing there's a new gulag it's a hijack look-alike so that's gonna be the seasonal change here that you'll see for the duration of season four likely changing out then with season five if recent seasons have been any pattern here with this gameplay changes though there's actually quite a few that are awesome i think the biggest one to me that i'm a huge fan of is the introduction of custom mods meaning that you can now actually save up to five blueprints for each cold war weapon which is finally something introduced that's been waited on since the integration and that makes creating classes so much easier on the fly and of course just makes managing your builds a lot easier as well you end up seeing there's the new dirt bike vehicle that was added in bringing over some more stuff from cold war into Warzone. loot spawns in both plunder and in br were adjusted to include the c58 and the mg82 as well as the combat bow streak being found in caches even more with the self-revived spawn rate actually being reduced so you shouldn't find that as much the snapshot grenade was changed here in which that reveal lasts two seconds now as opposed to the 1.25 that it did before and also enemies that are hit with snapshot grenades are now revealed to your teammates as well so it makes that a little bit more worthwhile to consider in your loadout or even just to pick up early game specialist was the only other thing here that was changed in terms of gameplay changes in which they said that it's rebalanced in a way that offers neither weapon perks nor drops upon death so if you end up finding it it's only going to be for that player for the duration of their life and only gives you actual perks, not weapon perks that go along with it. But what's interesting is that I thought that initially this was going to be something that came out of like an Easter egg or like what we saw here, the red door sort of Easter egg, if you want to call it that. But I actually found this in a regular common chest spawn in Plunder. So I don't know if that's going to transfer over into BR. You can just find this out of regular caches, but seems like it's introduced into the regular world spawn items as well so bear that in mind a little strange on that one but that's the changes here at that one outside of that we end up seeing a ton of weapon changes in terms of big tuning updates which this is going to take a little bit so i apologize if this sort of gets monotonous it starts to drone on but these are the changes that were made no less the cr56 amax had an upper torso damage multiplier decrease from 1.2 to 1.1 nerfing that ever so slightly the groza ended up getting a minimum damage increase from 18 to 23, an upper torso damage multiplier increase from 1.1 to 1.2, a lower torso damage multiplier increase from 1 to 1.11, and a maximum damage range decrease by 12%. So for most intensive purposes here, that's going to be something that buffs the weapon. It does reel back in that range that it's effective at, but at the same time, the Groza was more so used for close quarters, that maybe double rifle play. So that's going to be a phenomenal option here for you. The Assault Rifle Golf, which is the Modern Warfare Scar, ended up having its neck damage multiplier increased from 1 to 1.5, so a big increase there for that neck multiplier. The upper torso damage multiplier was also increased from 1 to 1.2, offering a little bit more damage here for the Scar, maybe making it a little bit more viable in long range, taking a gun that I would never use and saying, you know what? maybe I'd use it. That's kind of where I see this update here for this weapon. But the XM4 ended up rounding out the rifles that we see here with weapon changes, in which the neck damage multiplier was increased from 1 to 1.5, making that a very usable weapon and making it even more so. Now, as for the handguns, the Amp 63 was something that was the only pistol and handgun adjusted with this, in which the maximum damage was increased from 30 to 33. It had a second damage range increase by 14.3%. It had an upper torso damage multiplier increase from 1 to 1.1, and the extremities damage had a multiplier increase from 0.9 to 1, and the head damage multiplier was decreased from 1.4 to 1.3, kind of reeling in its TTK on all different avenues of the weapon. The ballistic knife ended up having its projectile velocity increased by 25%. The neck damage multiplier was increased to 1.3, whereas it was just 1 beforehand. The upper torso damage multiplier was also increased from 1 to 1.23, and the move speed was increased by 1.3%. The shotguns ended up seeing an adjustment to the street sweeper in which the maximum damage range was decreased by 24%, with the second damage range decreased by 18%, and a third damage range decreased by 7%. That movement speed overall was also decreased by 1%. Sniper rifles, we ended up seeing the M82 and Switch K31 adjusted here, with the M82 having its bullet velocity increased by 7.7%, and an upper torso multiplier increase from 1.1 to 1.25, as well as a lower torso damage multiplier increase from 1 to 1.15. The Swiss K31 had its base optic functionality improved, and also the base reticle updated. Submachine guns, we ended up seeing a couple of weapons in this category adjusted, in which the Submachine Gun Alpha, or AUG for Modern Warfare, had an upper torso damage 
damage multiplier increased from 1 to 1.1 and a maximum damage range increase by 10%. Actually, a hefty buff here to this in relation to where it stood comparatively to other SMGs in the game. The Bullfrog ended up having its Iron Sights ADS positioned adjusted. KSP had a maximum damage range increase by 16.6% and the Extremities multipliers increased from 0.9 to 1. The Milano 821 ends up having a maximum damage increase from 34 to 36, a minimum damage increase from 25 to 30, a maximum damage range increase by 23%, an upper torso damage multiplier increase from 1 to 1.2, the lower torso damage multiplier increase from 1 to 1.1, and the extremities damage multipliers increase from 0.9 to 1. The submachine gun Echo, or the Bison within Modern Warfare, had the maximum damage increase from 34 to 35, and the extremities damage multipliers increased from 0.9 to 1. The final weapon overall that was adjusted here is the DMR-14, in which that recoil magnitude was actually decreased, slightly nerfing this once again here, even though I haven't seen it really in play all that much, it's something that they saw statistically needed adjusted. We had a couple of attachments adjusted as well, in which for the snipers, the combat recon barrel was adjusted, in which it increased the bullet velocities for the values you'll see on screen right now offering up a little bit more in terms of each weapon's offering with that specific barrel, but we also saw increases to the Ranger barrel on assault rifles, the takedown on assault rifles, the reinforced heavy and match grade on assault rifles and LMGs, as well as the Task Force and Spetsnaz RPK and CMV mil spec on assault rifle and LMG options. So we had a lot done to these here, and then in most cases here, Black Ops Cold War reticles have been updated, the positions were shifted on the Axial Arms three times, and the Royal Cross four times optic location and finally the under barrel the bruiser grip on the snipers had increased aiming stability from 10 to 19 percent so quite a lot in terms of those changes here made in terms of weapon tuning but that rounds out that section here in terms of other adjustments made, Rose was actually changed here to attempt to increase the visibility. It seems like it was just brightened up, so you might not have as tough a time seeing this in a darker corner. So hopefully that fixes out that problem as well. Other big technical changes, though, to come here out of this update, one that I am extremely excited for for my friends here on PlayStation 5 is that PlayStation 5 now finally has proper 120 hertz support. Now, it's stated as requiring an HDMI 2.1 connection, but that's absolutely huge. Finally, a step to level the next-gen playing field for PS5 users. Xbox Series X users could already do this, and PC already can as well. And if you guys are just experiencing this for the first time, man, Welcome to the new world because that's going to feel smooth as butter. But then we ended up seeing that downed players who disconnect will now also provide kill credit and drop their loot, which is absolutely huge. That was something that players could do to cheese kills and loot out of a player that would have rightfully earned that. So to be able to have that now stick around even after the player backs out of the game, massive. On top of that, there are also an absurd amount of bug fixes, UI changes, and other things like that, which we'll leave down there in the description below. But outside of that, the only other things that were introduced were the maps in Cold War, of course, that we ended up seeing, and the other subsidiary items for Season 4 within Cold War. We talked about a lot of that as of yesterday, and outside of that, the only other items here are the shop items. Introduced in this season, we're going to see a lot, but as of today's update, we end up seeing that you, of course, have that battle pass if you did not buy it already, but two featured bundles that are really interesting interesting to me. Firstly, the circuit board reactive bundle, which for 1600 COD points, you get the motherboard grows a blueprint, M82 blueprint, the digital transmission emblem, circuit board calling card, desktop charm, and digital arcade sticker. Now the motherboard, of course, I'm all for reactive camos and things of that nature. I'm a huge camo guy, but this actually isn't a terrible build already on the Groza. Plus with the Groza being buffed within Warzone, it's not half bad. It might actually be pretty worth it here at this. The M82, I'm impartial to. I don't really care. Haven't used the M82, have no plans to, but that's introduced here. And then we also see the framework being introduced here that gives you immediate access to the nail gun. That being the puncture wound blueprint, the switcheroo finishing move, the celebratory smoke gesture, the horrible timing watch, the piercer emblem, the bloody burial calling card, and two tear skips. Now, the nail gun, we'll talk about this probably in a video either later today, tomorrow, or Saturday, it's actually 
kind of busted. It's insanely good, so this might actually be worthwhile. Now, if you guys do decide to pick up anything, it is entirely optional, but if you wish to support the channel a little further, you can use creator code ESPRESSO, and that support then directly translates to helping out the channel via your in-game purchase. So, of course, entirely optional. If you decide to do so, tweet me a picture. I'd love to shout out some of your generous support in upcoming videos. But other than that, that is the update here for Season 4 and what we have within Warzone. So that is where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Season 4. We have honestly so much stuff that you will not want to miss. So make sure you stick it here on the channel. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. But if you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, there's the best places to get comments on our YouTube. Probably live on both those. If you guys want to share up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.